Hello everyone. The topic for today's talk is symbolic computation with Python using SymPy. And I get to do the finale. Isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah. Just a quick introduction. I'm a SymPy dev. I'm a mathematics and computing undergrad student at IIT BHU and a FOSS enthusiast like everybody else here. What is SymPy? SymPy is an open source Python library for symbolic computation. We will get to what symbolic computation is. It's written entirely in Python. No dependency except MPMath. MPMath is a very small library, so that doesn't add much. Symbolic computation. Study and development of algorithms and software for manipulating mathematical expressions and other mathematical objects is what we call symbolic computation. To be a little more clear, uh, what's the difference between symbolic uh, and numeric stuff? Symbolic, you will represent pi as the symbol pi, but in numeric, you will write 3.14159265359, and that's great, but if you add another thousand digits, you still don't get the exact pi. So when you have to work with these kind of things, you will uh, want that you should not approximate and work with the exact values. So just, just to give a quick example, this is how we represent pi in SymPy. But this is how you will do in any other numerical library. In SymPy, another example is if you write, try to write square root 8, it will be 2 square root 2 and not the exact value which you would expect in other libraries. Something like this. So why use SymPy? There are a lot of other computer algebra systems like Mathematica, Maple. Then why SymPy? SymPy is standalone, doesn't have a lot of dependencies except MPMath. It's full featured, it gives you all the features which other computer algebra systems will give you. It's BSG licensed, that means you can use it in commercial projects for free. It embraces Python. Many computer algebra systems will give you a subset of a language or a new language which you have to work with. But with SymPy, you just have to write plain, simple Python. So x raised to the power y is x star star y, just like you will write it in normal Python code. SymPy was developed to be used as a library first. Many computer algebra systems have been developed to give an interactive shell-like structure. But SymPy was developed first as a library. You do have an interactive shell, you can have one. But you can also do from SymPy import star and you can just write it in your scripts and you are good to go. What's our goal? Our goal is to provide a symbolic manipulation library in Python and we are en route to a full featured computer algebra system. We already have a lot of basic features in place but still it's a long way to go. A lot of people have been contributing to SymPy and it's been great. Just a quick history, Andre Sertik started the project in 2006. A lot of work was done in Google Summer of Code 2007. Participated in every GSOC for last nine years. Aaron Muir, who is now the lead developer, took on, J uh, on Jan 4, 2011. He was also a GSOC student like myself. We have got a lot of contributions to GSOC. Features. SymPy provides the core capabilities like basic arithmetic stuff, simplification, expansion, functions, arbitrary precision integers, polynomials, calculus stuff like differentiation, integration, Taylor series. You can solve equations, which is one of the most used feature of SymPy. People use it to solve differential equations, ODEs, etc. Combinatorics, discrete math, plotting, physics, matrices, geometric algebra, geometry, physics, statistics, printing. One of the advanced features, which I like the most, is the code generation thing. Uh, using that, you can actually convert the SymPy code into C code and maybe into NumPy friendly code. I will just quickly uh, show you the, some of the features of SymPy. You just start with importing SymPy and init underscore printing is just a convenience function for some super cool printing methods. <laughs> symbols are the basic building block in SymPy. Sim with using symbols you make mathematical expressions with which you play. So just like you have symbol mu plus sigma, you can do mu plus sigma, you can do mu into sigma. Consider the bell function e power minus x minus mu square divided by sigma square. See, see, the, see the nice printing here? I don't know why there's a bar, but like, we don't have that normally. Numerical evalu uh, evaluation, uh, one of the most common methods to use subs. 
you can replace the symbolic values with numerical values or symbols with other symbols when needed you can also do the numerical stuff with it like the eval of method will give you to numerical precision uh, as requested like I have requested 200 so you get first 200 digits and it's, it's, it's also pretty easy to differentiation stuff you just use the diff method bell.diff x as an argument says that differentiate bell function with respect to x you could have done it with respect to mu as well integration we provide both definite and indefinite integration routines integrate x square x gives you x cubed by 3 x square x 0 to 3 gives you definite integration one of the other feature I liked and on which I worked as a GSOC student was the series expansion stuff consider just simple function like sine x and the main function which simple provides the series function and I say expand sine x with respect to x about 0 and give me the first 10 terms so that's how easy it is this is the function I worked on formal power series short for FPS what it does different is rather than giving you the first 10 terms or the first 20 terms you get an infinite representation so now you have an infinite representation of the sine x expansion and you can ask for the first 10 terms or 100 terms as you like a lot of people have been interested in the solvers module solvers module allows you to solve equations recently with the simpy 1.0 release we have moved to solve set solve set is just a newer version of sol with, with a very clean input and output api just a quick simple example sol set x square minus 4 gives you minus 2 comma 2 one of the uh, good features in solve set is now we support infinite solutions like solve set sine x minus 1 will give you 2n pi plus pi by 2 and belonging to z where z is the complex domain oh, z is in teacher sorry and solve set uh, in general simpy by default will uh, look over in the complex domain but you can set domain as reals as well just giving as domain equal as dot reals now solve set is not perfect sometimes an equation does not have a solution or sometimes simpy is not able to compute the solution so simpy will give you a nice condition set uh, with the unevaluated solution with it you can also use simpy for linear algebra stuff just like if we, if we define a simple matrix and want the singular values it's like super easy to do that and the eigenvalues now carefully note this, this is all symbolic stuff you don't get the numerical values like you will get in other packages you get it actually like how you will do it, it on a board so many people use it for physics or where you want to deal with the symbolic stuff rather than the numerical stuff now code generation I would say is a more advanced feature but one I am very much uh, interested in and it, it excites me a lot because you can do pretty nice stuff with it r underscore nl is the radial wave function for the hydrogen atom don't worry if you don't get it like just an example the lambda phi function will allow you to convert the simpy objects into other backends most commonly like numpy so when you do make a numpy array and apply this function on it you get the array broadcasting facilities and other features you would expect it's also very easy to plot with it another feature I like is the code gen module sometimes you want you wrote some simpy code you have some simpy expression and you need C code for it I don't know why you will need it but for speed maybe so you just use the code gen function and you get the C code it's not that beautifully written but it works <laughs> that simpy has a very wide user base so a lot of things have been done people have varying needs people do want to do different things so sometimes entertaining things also come along like we have a text plot function which will give you textual plotting as well <laughs> if you don't want to use matplotlib <laughs> let's move on to a more real life example the end pendulum problem this is an awesome blog written by one of the simpy dev jason moore he is a professor at uc davis so he has been working a lot on the mechanic stuff so this is an end pendulum with end pendulums connected together on a cart and the cart can move horizontally from left to right you have the masses you have the angles you have the lengths so what we are interested in can we find out the equation of motion 
So SymPy can help you in that. We have a SymPy.physics.mechanics module. You import. We give n is equal to 5. That is, we need 5 pendulums. You can have 10 if you want to. Dynamic symbols. Dynamic symbols are just dynamic variables, which we have in the mechanics passage, uh, package. You make the generalized coordinates, generalized speeds, force. Then you have you define some symbols, just symbol, uh, SymPy symbols, and a reference frame. Next up, just skipping over the details and just see this loop. If you see this loop, what we are do, trying to do is we are setting up a system. So once we are ready with the system, and then SymPy provides you with a Keynes method class, which will just like let you solve this uh, this system in just one line of code. Keynes underscore equation. Now, as you can see, these equations of motion are very, very long, and you will have trouble writing them on your own. So, SymPy does it for you, and that too without any mistakes. Hopefully, we are well tested, by the way. So, uh, let's uh, try to simulate what we have done. See here, we have used the lambda phi function for converting into NumPy array, and then we have mainly used the SciPy's Odin function for integration. Now, if you look over this graph, at the start, all the angles are same, but as you let the system evolve, it becomes more and more chaotic, uh, as you would expect in this kind of a problem. It is very common to expect such kind of thing. This is a graph for the velocities. Just to have a quick look of how this uh, pendulum looks. As the cards start moving, it gets more and more chaotic. So, as a scientist, you would ask, uh, can I control the pendulum? Like, the cart is moving and I want the pendulum in a perfect vertical, vertical shape. Well, we can do that. The answer is yes. So, we first define the initial conditions, then using the Keynes method and the linearizing func linearized function, which SymPy provides, you just solve the equation, use the control module, and ta-da, you get a system that calculates for you how to, how to calculate the pendulum. So it's, it's super easy, but it's like quite difficult to do by hand, as so many equations and so many stuff, you, you, you will get it wrong, I'm sure. <laughs> so one of the very important aspect of SymPy is it's a very small package, but has huge capabilities. Consider Sage, for example. Sage has a size of like more than 1 GB, but SymPy, SymPy has just a size of like 5 MB, so, and no dependencies, just like except MP math. So it's pretty, pretty convenient and pretty easy to use. Some general stacks, stats, we now have over 500 contributors, half a million lines of code and docs, 3,100 plus targets, 1,500 plus folks, 200 plus watchers, 60,000 plus monthly downloads on PyPy, but unfortunately we still have 350 plus open pull requests. So we are always looking for good contributors who can help us review and merge this code. We have had 53 releases so far, with the latest being SymPy 1.0, first time. Now, this, this is a fun little graph, which as you can see tells that the number of patches per person are almost more than the other famous SymPy projects. So we have a very, very good community. People are very interested in contributing. And a lot of contributions have been done in the past. Future plans. We obviously want to make things faster. Implement more algorithms. Everybody needs those. Encourage more people to use and contribute to SymPy. That's why we, every year, participate in GSOC. We have got a lot of new contributors coming every year. The full list of things to be implemented uh, can be seen on our GSOC Ideas page. A lot of work is going on SimEngine. SimEngine is a new project, it's a sister project of SimPy, where the code has been rewritten into C++, mainly for speed improvements, and we are providing Python wrappers so that it can be used in Python. And according to our initial benchmarks, in some of the features, SimEngine is currently the fastest CES. But still, we have a long way to go, and it's still under development. That's it. Questions?
Hi, um, that looks like a really great package. I'd like to use it. So I'm um, wondering, when you render the you know, nice equations, um, what format is that, and can you get them out as uh, LaTeX code? Yes, you can. Init underscore printing provides you with all kinds of things. You can have ASCII stuff, you can have MatJax, you can have LaTeX, anything you want. So that init underscore printing function does all that for you. Uh, the C code that it will generate, will it be able to do um, arbitrary precision? Uh, I've never tried it, but it should be. Hmm. be interesting. I've never tried it, though. I'm just wondering if anyone um, made any suggestions um, to uh, implement uh, electronic circuits or circuit models in uh, SymPy? Mm, I don't think that in our domain there are all already good packages for handling that like BinPy and that kind of stuff. So we are really providing the basic computer algebra system things with which we can solve. So I don't think so it falls in our domain. We, we can have a chat tomorrow maybe. <laughs>